<clears throat> All right. So this is to supplement some of our lower body anatomy and a little bit of structure and work that goes with it. And we've been covering uh, a little bit more recently some of the bones and muscles of the feet. And so um, I just wanted to go over a little bit of these. So down here in the lower leg, we have our uh, fibia and tibia down here in the lower leg bones. And then we have uh, down on our, on our feet some gnarly toes. We have our phalanges. We have our metatarsal bones, which are kind of the big bones in the middle. These are a lot like your fingers, by the way. The big, the big toe has a lot of its own musculature, a little bit unique to the other ones, a lot like up in your hand, where these four fingers operate off a lot of the same musculature and stuff. And the thumb, a lot like the big toe, kind of has some of its own operating work too. And then here, all these small bones, these are a lot like your small wrist bones. I believe there's one extra as far as the whole ankle goes. And then we have at your heel the calcaneus. And this is a huge bone and this is where the body mass that comes down through the shin uh, distributes back to, back and out. It's also where your calf and soleus come down through the Achilles tendon and attached to here. So the whole mechanic of using your calf to, to lift your heel or to press out of the foot, press off the foot, or where we have our um, plantar and dorsiflexion, dorsi plantar. So we use the calf to pull the heel back, which forces the rest of the foot to kind of press down, presses it all the way down through the tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. Also moves these because they're all kind of connected through here. The really cool bone through all these for today is gonna to be this talus bone. So right under the shin here, there's this bone that's in front of and a little bit above the calcaneus. And then it's a little bit back behind all these small little bones in here. You don't have to memorize all those for now. And so your body mass comes down and distributes right into this bone, right off of the shins. And it depresses down and back through the heel and down and forward your body mass through all of the toe structure. And this is one of the reasons why we start to see folks without good foot mechanics, their arches collapse. And we start to see once the arch collapse, we also see some collapse of the ankle in and of itself. And if you caught the lecture or the short piece where we talked about a lot of the musculature in here, that's why it's so important to press down through the toe mounds, all the way up through here, and the toe tips, and to start to operate the muscles that connect all the way into the arch or the foot bed, and to start to put some of the tone in the musculature and take a little bit of the stress off of some of the connective tissue that's in there. We th talked about a little bit about our plantar fasciitis. And when you begin to press down well through here, it takes the pressure of the body mass that's coming down right through here and starts to press it back up, right back up from here, back up. And for a yoga purpose, from our footwork, whenever we're standing, it's that footwork that presses these bones right up here. It shortens the distance in here and moves this bone up almost like a little bit of a bow. And this is the, what gets launched out of it. And it starts to extend your body mass back up through the body. And the conversation of moving prana through your body, prana through your body mass does come down. And if it comes down without any sort of control or muscular or connective tissue control on it, it begins to displace the bones. And it can also relate to the displacing of your posture up here, displacing of the bones and decreasing your function, not only of your breathing and your organs, but of your musculoskeletal system too. Musculoskeletal and your fascial system as well. Without this good footwork, whenever you fire up your calf and pull the heel back, one of the things that happens without good integration through here, it still forces this down more. 
displaces the foot bend or over elongates it or collapses the arch. And so you even lose some of the power of the calf to be able to really press the calf as it pulls, pulls the heel back, forces this area down. But if this area in here is kind of weak or unintegrated, as this pulls back, you'll still find a lot of mass falling down through the arch. And then the forefoot, as it just collapses, we start to see a period where the calf engages and it just stretches and collapses the arch before it's just so overstretched that it begins to lift the heel off the ground and there we have some of your footwork movement. And a really good foot mechanics for running or walking or jogging, part of this integrates and even as the calf begins to pull this, there's an equal amount of press down there. The arch and then this wonderful talus bone moves the body mass up, which is part of the reason why we would engage and press down. And the yoga poses, we don't often lift the heel to do that, but we still accomplish the same movement of your body mass and your forces as it relates to the bone. This one little bone is so key in it, just recognizing it. It's also part of the reason to start to develop your arches and your foot and your ankle stability so that we can get your body mass, your body form, your spinal body, axial and appendicular skeleton to extend up, up in towards the downward flow of gravity and in some ways in the downward flow of your stress. All right, a little bit more on your body. Uh, please remember that this goes with the musculature lecture as well. Uh, so if you do see that on the quiz, remember some of the muscles that we've talked about more than just the, the gastroc and the soleus. Have a good one.